Welcome back to DJX Chronicles. Um, I was having some trouble with the other recording I'm working on, and um, I'd have to re-edit it again, and I don't want to do that because it's like an hour. So I'm going to go on ahead and read uh, something that I've been writing. It's kind of in draft state, so it might not be the cleanest, but it's an article about the gift of knowledge and the human experience. That's what I named it. Um, it's a pretty crazy article, um, but anyway, I don't even know if you'd call it an article. Mankind is separated from all other life in our world because he was created for the gift of reason and the pursuit of knowledge. But with this gift of reason comes great cost and other hardships. I just wanted to say before I get into anything... I'm not trying to tell anyone how to live or ask anyone to fix their lives, as mine is also messed up. I am not saying I want you to drop everything and change your course, because I'm not really prepared to do that either. I want to try to lay out my understanding of the topic of knowledge. This is only written from my perspective, as everyone has a slightly different background and has different views on our wonderful world. I might not be wholly right, but I am not likely to be wholly wrong, so I'm just going to go with it. The Gift of Knowledge So, just what is this gift of knowledge? Was it purely derived from our Creator? Or, did it always exist and He managed to discover the knowledge and pass it on to us? Well, I believe God also created the human intellect and that the only way to reach true knowledge is to ask him to grant you wisdom for all the days of your life. I am simply suggesting that perhaps, even if you happen to obtain this wisdom on your own, your perception of reality would be thus distorted by your newly obtained knowledge. Humans cannot possibly understand all things at one time due to forgetfulness, Sometimes, trying to forget things can be the best weapon in our arsenal, while at other times, forgetfulness can be the very thing that kills you in the end. The Fall of Man I always seem to be met with an air of disbelief when I try to explain things to people, because I am usually over the top most of the time, and I often forget or omit simple yet highly crucial information. I know it is equally difficult to believe someone at face value when we live in a world that is built on sin. How does this sin come into the world, then, if it was created by loving hands? Well, the sin came into the world through deception and subsequent choices of a man and a woman to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil in hopes to possibly gain the secret knowledge of their creator for themselves. They were led to believe that they would be like gods themselves. They were instructed that they could eat any fruit of the vine, just so long as you don't eat from the big pretty one in the middle. So, in return for their disobedience of having eaten the fruit, they only gained pain and suffering. These sufferings, we as humans are now forced to suffer until the end of our time in existence. This is the gist of the fall of man, an account from out of Genesis. During this fall, we obtained the knowledge of both good and evil, as well as the difference between the two. The cost of obtaining this gift of reason from God made it more difficult for men to grow crops increased pain in childbirth for women, and other punishments like being thrust from paradise and cut off from it. Now some people, who think like myself, might ask the question, why did some omnipotent lord place the only tree that he didn't want them to eat from on his new earth right in front of them, if he already knew that they would eat of that forbidden fruit before too long, because he already knew human nature all too well. In the end, it feels as if God took the action of two persons 
and a freaky snake with legs, and blamed these actions on every person who was to come after them for all time to our modern day. And he removed the legs from the creepy snake, I might add. The nature of God and humanity. He is love, but also vengeance, much like Batman. I mean to say, God is capable of love, but he is also vengeful, because he designed and fashioned man after his image. We would also be cast out of a similar temperament. In simple words, we are thrust into a world of blissful sin, but are expected to go on with our life above it all, when we are just humans who equally want to experience pleasure and pain, just like everyone else. The only way out of this temporary existence is said to be through God. You know, the one who put us here to begin with. My point here is simply stating that we were created because God just wanted a creature on his new earth with the free will to see all the evil around them, flee from it, and choose to leave this whole life behind to serve him fully and with conviction. But of course, we are all convinced and conditioned to believe that God is fake or dead, all because everything around us appears devoid of love. So there is also a big air of disbelief when it comes to the creation story as well as with God himself among us all. The Role of Religion All this being said, my point is to say, religion was created by mankind to distract us from our arbitrary existence. Now, I'm not suggesting that we made up God, but that we have created the belief systems to go along with how to follow God from the perspective of all peoples. I, like everyone else, try to explain things away as I observe them, and most of the time, my limited understanding, or the way I say something in general, causes factual information to be ignored, but the misinformation seems to catch on and spread like a fire. Until, of course, they find it to be false, at which point they now blame you for the misinformation, because now it looks like you told a calculated lie, rather than made a mistake and didn't notice. Now, I am not saying that every lie I tell is strictly a result of being wrong, but sometimes people lie on impulse. It is human nature to preserve oneself over everything else. It would take a very strong-willed person to stop themselves from lying, and then to turn around and admit that they were being dishonest with you, if that makes sense. Striving for improvement. I would say, try to live life to the best of your ability, even if you don't understand. But be nice to others and try to understand their human struggles, just as much as you expect others to understand your struggles. These difficulties are sometimes caused by our actions because we choose to do something that we knew was wrong. Meanwhile, at other times, our struggles can be caused by what we choose to surround ourselves with. Be careful of the company that you keep and try to be mindful of what types of environment in which you constantly find yourself. You don't have to follow some god to be a good person. At the same time, you do not have to be a good person to start trying to turn your life around for the better in an attempt to approve Im uh, Improve yourself. Even if only to try and make yourself feel better about the situations that you happen to be in. I know I am on all this God talk when I have a complicated relationship with God right now. I don't attend church or even read the Bible very often, though I have read most of it in the past. So I'm not exactly trying to advocate Christianity here, but I am 
trying to encourage everyone to choose the best possible versions of themselves to become, no matter what that is. I am only speaking from the perspective of religion because that is my background and is thus my interpretation of reality. Every person in the world is different, and that is where the true beauty of our world lies. Sameness would be a major defect of mankind. The cost of knowledge can be immense, but the pursuit of knowledge is one of the most rewarding pursuits that we can undertake in our lives. Never stop learning, unless you're learning that the earth is flat, and in that case, I only have one thing to say, Pythagorean Theorem. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, that's about right. I'll see you next time. Bye.